What I want to focus on this morning is some other things the Lord has spoken to me in prayer that I felt very strongly impressed to share in this service, Friday night in this service, in anticipation of the year to come. Now remember that when we share something and we say, the Lord told me or the Lord said to me, it doesn't bear the same burden of, uh, you know, I'm a human being, so I can miss it, right? I'll tell you what I believe I've heard from the Lord the best I know how, and I do it with fear and trembling, and we'll also admit that as a human, I can sometimes miss it. So we don't take what our pastor says or even what a person who's a a prophet says and put it on the same level as the Bible itself. But very often, the Lord does speak through people and confirm things to prepare us for what's to come. So I'm going to be, do my best to be bold, but I need you to be good students of the Word of God and uh, to remember that, uh, that uh, you know, I'm a human being, and if I miss it, be loving and forgiving, okay? Is that all right? Okay. So let's begin by reading the psalm. Psalm 144 and verse 1, a psalm of David. Praise the Lord, who is my rock. He trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. He is my shield, and I take refuge in him. He makes the nations submit to me. O Lord, what are human beings that you should notice them, or mere mortals that you should think about them? For they are like the breath of air. Their days are like a passing shadow. In, in those two verses, verses 3 and 4, he's talking about these, these individuals that are threatening God's people that will need to be confronted in battle. And he says that they're just passing shadows. Not to be afraid of people is the heart of what he's saying. In verse 5, it says, Open the heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they billow smoke. Hurl your lightning bolts and scatter your enemies. Shoot your arrows and confuse them. Reach down from heaven and rescue me. Rescue me from deep waters and from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. Verse 9, I will sing a new song to you, O God. I will sing your praise with a ten-stringed harp, for you grant victory to kings. You rescue your servant David from the fatal sword. Save me. Rescue me from the power of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. That's a, that's a Hebrew, uh, that's, a, that's a Hebrewism. It's a repetition from verse 8. Now notice verse 12. Now the shift after talking about victory and battles, in verse 12, there's a shift, a reason for this. Uh, in in uh, the King James, it says, so that, in other words, because of God's victory in battle, these are the things that God will bring into my life. And that's very clear in the Hebrew that what he's about to read are his intended plans for his people as they engage in winning the battles that confront them in life. And it says, may our sons flourish in their youth like well-nurtured plants. May our daughters be graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. May our barns be filled with crops of every kind. And may the flocks in our fields multiply by the thousands, even tens of thousands. And may our oxen be loaded down with produce. And may there be no enemy breaking through our walls. No going into captivity, no cries of alarm in our town squares. Yes, joyful are those who live like this. Joyful indeed are those whose God is the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you to write this down and to declare this over your life. Now, it's very clear that the first part of this psalm is taking seriously the reality that in life we're going to have battles. And in the new year that is coming, there will be battles. That doesn't take a prophet. Just live a few days and you're going to have a battle of some kind. We have spiritual battles. We have moral battles. We have battles with our flesh. We have battles sometimes with people that have come against us. We have battles in our finances. There are battles. And as wonderful as it is to, be, uh, to know that we're God's children and that he loves us and that he's our rock and our fortress and our strong tower, the same Bible that tells us that we are saved by God's grace and eternally his children also tells us to put on the whole armor of God and take our stand against the schemes of the devil. The Bible tells us we are the family of God. It also tells us we are the army of God. 
right? And so we've got to have both of those mentalities. There are things that we rest and rejoice in as members of the family of God, but there are also missions that he sends us on, and we have to be willing to engage in those missions. There are battles. And I believe in this new year that this is going to be a year in which the battles that do come into our lives personally or that come, into our, that come against our nation, and I talked a little more about the national sense I have about that on Friday night, but the battles that we face in this new year are battles that are not designed to be long-term struggles, a detente over a demilitarized zone where one, one, one uh, you know, group sort of takes a little ground and the other group fights them back, and it's just a long-term kind of a standoff. I'm telling you that the battles that are coming are battles that we're going to have to rise up and win. And they're battles that God is going to give us quick victories in. If we'll rise up and remember, he's trained us for this. The Bible says he's trained my hands for war and my fingers are skillful in battle. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, my people have more knowledge and more, and more ability than they know. And if they'll rise up and engage the enemies in their lives, I will give them quick victory. Everybody say quick victory. Now, there's sometimes there's things that we struggle with over a long period, but I believe that if we'll engage the battles that come, God will give us quick victory. So don't be upset about battles. Be excited about victory. Be excited. Be excited about the fact that I know how to fight and win in the battles that come in my life. Praise the Lord. And we need to go with that mindset. Uh, secondly, the Lord spoke to my heart that the Lord is going to, when we rise up and engage these, these, uh, these enemies that will come before us, the Lord will send arrows of lightning and quickly defeat our enemies. And I love this passage. It said, Lord, open the heavens and come down, touch the mountains, hurl your lightning bolts and scatter your enemies, shoot your arrows and confuse them. Remember, any, any enemy that's an enemy of you is an enemy of God. Praise the Lord. So as you rise up and you get your hands to battle, the Lord will rise up and he's going to send from heaven, I love this, lightning like arrows. He's going to shoot missiles from heaven and he's going to take out the enemy quickly. Praise the Lord. And I want you to believe for that. I want you to see the Lord do quick and supernatural victories. He's going to send missiles that are just going to take care of a lot of things that look like they're impossible to deal with, but the Lord knows exactly where to strike and when to strike. Praise the Lord. Uh, the third thing I felt in my heart from this passage is that in the new year, we will see remarkable deliverances, and it will be known as a time of victory. Not just war, but victory. Everybody say victory. Say this out loud, when I, I fight to win. And notice this verse, it says, I will sing to you a new song, O God. You, you sing because you're full of joy. This is a song of victory. I will sing your praises on the ten-stringed harp, for you grant victory to kings. Say, well, I'm not a king. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. The book of Revelation chapter 1 says that we have been made kings and priests unto our God because he's washed us from our sins in his own blood. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. That means you in God's mind are royalty. You belong to a king. You're born of a king. You've got king's blood in you. Praise the Lord. And that we're going to see victory and we're going to, I believe that in this new year, God is going to give us a taste of what it is to rule and reign. Not to be ruled over and reigned on, but to rule and reign. Get the mentality of a victor, not a victim. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody and say, grant victory. For you rescue your servant from the fatal sword. Save me and rescue me from the power of my enemies. And notice, this is a declaration of what God will do. Not just a prayer that you hope he might do it, but he will do it. And he'll do it to the point that you'll sing new songs of victory to the Lord. I believe in this new year, you're going to have moments of breakthrough and victory. And it's going to cause you to have a new sense of worship, a new sense of glory. You'll be singing new songs to the Lord, celebrations from your heart about things that are finally dealt with. Finally. Finally. Hallelujah. And when the Lord speaks to you to engage in something, to do battle, do battle. Do it with, a, with all your might. Do it with, a, with the word of God, with the blood of the Lord Jesus. Use the words of your mouth. Speak against the enemy. Praise the Lord. I believe it's a year we're going to have to rise up and, and, and win 
I don't want to say fight as much. I don't want you to focus on the fight. The fight's part of it. But as you rise up to fight, just even before you engage the enemy, just moving on the battlefield, missiles are going to come from heaven and take those things out, and you're going to sing a song of victory. Praise the Lord. You know, in the Bible, there's all of these battles that look just impossible. The enemy was outnumbering God's people. And God's people were afraid, and they were just kind of oppressed. And then all of a sudden, finally, they rise up and say, we're going to fight. And in so many cases in the Bible, they go to fight, and they don't even really get to fight very much because the Lord does the work for them as they move in the direction of the battle. The Bible describes in the book of 1 Kings uh, 13, talks about, or 1 Samuel 13, it talks about the Israelites and the Philistines. And they were constantly struggling back and forth. And they would, they would attack, the, the enemies would attack God's people and God's people would drive them back. And, and then they, they, they'd try to attack the Philistines and the Philistines would, would threaten them. And they were just kind of back and forth. How many of you ever feel like sometimes in your life you're just going back and forth and back and forth, right? And then, there, and then the Philistines had this giant... Uh, who was a, incredibly frightening, and he would come out and threaten them every day. And it just kept the, the, the people of God. They didn't leave the battlefield, but they just kind of stood there, and they were all afraid to really go forward. And then all of a sudden, God takes little David, you know, a 13-year-old kid, and he takes five smooth stones, and he goes out and he confronts the one guy. And all he did, if you think about it, he threw a stone, one stone, and hit that giant in the head and knocked the giant out. And when he knocked the giant out, all of the Philistines suddenly were filled with fear and began to run away. And the Israelites, the people of God, pursued them and quickly overtook them. So it was a rapid battle with a strategic moment of turn. There's another place where the Bible talks about God's people surrounded by Assyrians. And it looked impossible and they looked overwhelmed. But the Spirit of the Lord said, uh, put the Lord told them to go ahead and praise for victory anyway. So they put the worship team out in front of the army and they began to praise the Lord. And the Bible says as they worshiped God, the Lord sent angels who put ambushments against the Assyrians and the Assyrians began to attack themselves. And by the time it was over, it was just a cleanup job. Praise the Lord. And this is what I'm sensing as we rise up to, with, a, with a shout of victory to engage in the battles we need to engage in. God is going to be sending missiles from heaven. He's going to be fighting for us. Just picture us and then picture God in heaven in the clouds behind us coming. And before we even get there, God's done all the work. We get to, we get to say, praise the Lord. We won. But you know, the Lord is the reason. He's trained your hands for war. He's trained your, your fingers. For, you know more than you think you know. You've got more power than you realize you've got. The name of Jesus will work if you will speak the name of Jesus on your lips. If you'll bind the enemy, he is bound. If you resist him, he will flee from you. Believe that in the name of Jesus. <coughs> Turn to somebody and say, I've got more power than I look. Like, <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will see remarkable deliverances and great victories in this new year. I believe it's God's intended purpose for us. And then notice this next passage. It says in verse 12 that our sons and daughters may flourish in their youth like well-nurtured plants. Our daughters will be graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. And what I sense in my spirit is in this new year, the Lord is going to bring restoration and new purpose to children and to families restoration and new purpose to children and to families. You know, very often uh, we, we see our, our children going off after other things, and often they go af after other things because they're looking for a purpose. And the world offers them all kinds of opportunities, but when you have a divine purpose, it settles you. And I just see the Lord showing our children, our sons and daughters, that they are, they are divine sons of God, daughters of the king, they were designed for kingdom purposes. And when you know that you're a king, when you know that you're a prince or a princess, there are just certain things that you don't engage in because that's not who you are. And I sense the Lord is going to help our families to understand their divine purposes as sons and daughters of God and, and the, our purposes and missions as families in this world today, right now. And it's going to bring restoration and it's going to bring focus and it's going to bring healing to families. Praise the Lord. And if you have a son or a daughter, I don't care if they're full grown, 
and they may not be looking like they're acting like the prince of God or the princess of God they should be, speak verse 12 over them. Say, my sons flourish in their youth like well-nurtured plants. Declare my daughters will be graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. Graceful pillars. One translation said carved in palace style. I mean, they just, they just when you look at them, you look, that is not... That is not just a common woman. That's not just a good-looking lady. That is a daughter of the king. There's a royalty about my children. Hallelujah. Restoration and purpose to families and children. I believe that's his intention. Now notice the 13th verse because this brings us to the next thing I believe that God wants to do in this new year for us and we need to set our faith on. I believe in this new year God will multiply our streams of income and bring prosperity into our families and into our community from various places. I'm going to say it again, multiply our streams of income. Now let's read the verse, verse 13. May our barns, everybody say barns. You know, you have different, you know, if you're a farmer, you have different barns for different purposes. You have barns for animals, you've got barns for certain kinds of crops. So you've got to have more than one barn. That means you've got to have multiple streams where your business is coming into your life. May our barns be filled with crops of, notice, every kind. That means, that means you're not just a farmer that knows how to plant corn, or you're a farmer that knows how to raise sheep, or you're a farmer that plants wheat. You have become a farmer that has learned how to farm different kinds of crops, and you have different barns in which to bring those crops in. I want you to see this. If you were, uh, uh, were 3,000 years ago when David wrote this, and you were listening to this, you would understand that he's not talking a metaphor about spiritual things. It's an actual reference to a person's business and economy. They were farmers, and he's declaring a blessing of prosperity that they would have barns, multiple storehouses, and they would have crops of different kinds that were producing at different times in different ways. Some crops produce in the spring, some produce in the summer. There's even in the Middle East a winter wheat that comes in. There are some, uh, there are some uh, animals and livestock that bear in certain times of the year, and a good farmer learns how to manage all of them. I believe that God wants his people people to learn how to not just see their job as their source, but that God is their source and your day job or what you're doing right now may be one source of income, but don't think that the annual cost of living raise from your job is the only way God's going to bless you. He wants you to get a mindset beyond that. There may be other businesses, other opportunities. You might find it, you might buy something or sell something or, or you might end up becoming a consultant of some sort. You've got skills, you've got abilities, you've got things inside of you the Lord wants you to use and I believe that God is going to expand this idea of multiple streams of income and multiple barns of blessing in a greater way for the body of Christ in this new year. <clears throat> Can you at least be open to it? Different kinds of crops. And the flocks of our fields multiply by thousands, even tens of thousands. Can you believe that the flocks in your life, maybe some of your investments can multiply more than just 2% or 3%? I mean, what about, what about a thousand percent? The Lord might just put it on your heart just to, just to buy a little piece of a stock of some kind. And you know, you buy some stock, you buy the right stock at the right price and you hang on to it. If you're led by the Holy Spirit, a small investment can become a very large something very quickly. And I'm not telling you to play the market. I'm telling be led by the Holy Spirit. So I don't know how to get into this stuff. Can I just say something right now? This is not in my message. I'm just going to say something. Right, I'm going to give you some strategies right now. If you, if you have a smartphone, download the app Digit, D-I-G-I-T. Very simple app, and it just basically sets aside a little, you, you tell it how much, it is an algorithm that studies your, your spending in your bank accounts, and it pulls money that you don't notice and sets it aside in a savings account for you. And you can have it aggressive or not aggressive, but I ended up saving several thousand dollars this year, didn't even try to, just by putting on this app and setting it at a certain setting, 
and we had a hot water heater go. We had to replace it. And I said, oh, I got that digit thing. I opened it up, and there was like all the money I needed was sitting right there in that account. And it, there's another app you can open up that it just takes everything, like say something costs 10.52 or 10.61. It takes the rounded up amount from the 61 to a dollar, and it puts it in an account for you. So it rounds it up. Instead of paying 10.61, you're paying $11, but the balance of it goes to yourself in a savings account. So it's money you don't often miss. And you can save money. It's just a way to save money. I discovered the app Robinhood. <laughs> you know what Robinhood is? Yes. Brokerage free, f- broker fee free. You can buy and sell stocks without paying a broker on your phone instantly. And I'm not recommending any particular, you know, this is not financial advice here from a financial advisor. But you can begin to buy one little piece of stock. If that's all you got, you got 30 bucks and you find a stock you like, you can buy one piece and you don't pay any broker fee. I can't tell you how much money I put aside in stocks this year using Robinhood. And you don't have to have, you don't have, to have a big financial advisor. And I'll, not that there's anything wrong with having that. That's important. I do have folks that advise me, but, but this is just something I did on my own. There's all kinds of ways now to buy and sell things. It's amazing. Young people today are getting on eBay and making money. I'm just saying there's multiple ways to receive income. Let the Lord guide you, okay? But open your heart and mind and, uh, and take, some, take some steps of trust and see what develops. All right. May your flocks and fields multiply by thousands, even tens of thousands. Now, the Lord said this to me in a prophetic word as I was in prayer earlier, and I felt impressed to share it today. And this is what he said. Now, in the days, in these days and in this hour, it is essentially important that you don't let your heart be troubled or be afraid, that you don't become anxious or fearful. Uh, Choose in this day and this hour to listen to the Spirit and let Him guide you into prosperity. He'll give you strategies and ideas. And if you follow the Spirit and do what He says, it may not be, it may not totally make sense in the moment, but shortly it will. And if you have a sense to sell something, uh, do it. Or prepare this, or build that, or whatever it is, do it. Do what you feel your Spirit telling you to do, even if you don't have all the information. For even as God told Noah, build an ark, and He built it many years in advance, and no one knew why he was building it, he still built it. He built it, and then when it was finished, the rains came, and he was ready. So arcs must be built in this time, arcs to carry blessing in the time that is to come. Build not just for now, build for what is to come. Build for what is to come. Some of you have extra rooms. You should rent them out. You might need to rent them, uh, because many, many shall need a place to stay. Now, I want to get to the last point of this psalm. It's in verses 14 and 15. It says, And may our oxen be loaded down with produce, and may there be no enemy breaking through our walls. Now, notice our walls. That's not just your house. Now he's moving from individual families to the community. Walls would surround villages and cities. No enemy breaking through our community. Uh, no going into captivity, no cries of alarm in our town squares. Yes, joyful are those who live like this. The final blessing of Psalm 144 is not just individual prosperity, the blessing of your, your children, but now your entire community is protected. Walls represent safety, protection and strength. And God wants to in this year, and I'm going to just say this, I believe he wants to bring a new unity and a new prosperity and peace into the upstate New York region and into our community. A new unity, a new prosperity, and a new peace. That our oxen, the oxen are beasts of burden that carry things, work. They provide work, they carry, they carry harvest, they carry work tools that our oxen will be load, laded, load, loaded down, which means there's lots of work available 
to be done. Are you following what I'm saying? Lots of things to be done and lots of produce, things produced, and the enemies can't break through our community walls. No more going into captivity. In other words, it's not one community is blessed and the other community is struggling. And this is what I believe. I'm proclaiming this over central New York. God's vision is for central New York not to be a collection of villages and townships and cities, but one great region and community. One great community. Because what happens in our cities does impact those who live in the, in, the, in the rural areas. And what happens to our farming communities impacts those of us who live in the suburbs. We are one community. Our destiny is tied together. And the more we recognize that and think like that and believe for the prosperity of our entire region, the more great things God can do for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and say great things. And then I heard the Lord say this. This is in First Saturday Prayer on November 4th. There shall be changes, many changes, in the nation and even in this region. And it shall be surprising to many. For you will see growth and development and building like you've not seen in this region since. And then I began to see old cars like in the early part of the 20th century, maybe the 20s, 40s, and 50s, uh, where there was a season of explosive growth in upstate New York. I see another explosive time. And you're going, to, uh, you're going to see people who will come to this region, and you'll say, who are you and where are you from? And they will answer, I'm from California. And you'll say, what are you doing in central New York? And they say, oh, we love it here. It's beautiful. And somebody says, where do you come from? And they say, we're from Austin, Texas. What are you doing here? Well, we just had to come up here to work. Work here? Oh, yes. And you're going to meet people from all over. They're going to come, many immigrant families, many, 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 many who speak Spanish. And this will be a place of safety, a safe place economically and spiritually. You'll be amazed at how certain things are repurposed. Certain buildings in our communities will be changed. And what they were before, they will be different now but they're going to be renovated and the Lord will rebuild again the streets and the ramparts that have fallen down and they will be lifted up again. And I see people flocking, flocking, because of suddenly the hidden wealth of this area is going to be very, very evident in a, in to others in other parts of the country. The Adirondacks will be a go-to place. People will come everywhere to hike the Adirondacks. The Finger Lakes will draw people from all over the world. They'll just be drawn to these places, these ancient lakes, these glacial lakes. We need to pray for the church to rise up, the body of Christ. We need to pray for people that will come uh, and for churches to be planted, for there will be many people who will greatly need spiritual and uh, food and nutrition. And I heard the Lord say to me, for you are preparing for the time that is to come. For this region, even this city, has been set apart by the Lord and preserved and maintained. It hasn't grown really, just kind of maintained. But this is because I've called this to be a city of refuge and a place of staging for a time to come. For there shall be here and there throughout this region places of safety, arcs of safety for those who are fleeing from trouble, trouble that comes upon the earth. They'll be coming to escape from terror and war, from ec refugees of economic disaster and natural disasters. And I'm positioning you to be a place of supply. And I see these large storage buildings, huge warehouses, uh, storage and distribution places that are beyond our little reach building over here that we're building. And they, uh, they will be filled with all kinds of supplies and merchandise that will be stored and then taken to many other places. These facilities will be designed to bring commerce, to bring things from here to there. And I don't know exactly how to describe it. It almost looks like uh, places, uh, warehouses where people receive what they need. And this is what I heard, that this will be known as a resourcer. People shall come to get resources. Um, there's coming massive schematic, systematic changes, systemic changes that are going to facilitate great growth, even large companies relocating suddenly, not from here to there, but from there to here. And in the years to come, they'll say it's because of water. There's so much water. For their water shall be as oil in the not too far off future. Clean water shall be as oil. Uh, <clears throat> And there shall be innovation in the area of healing. And there will be a collection of health care providers and services here. And some that are not known yet. 
And this shall be a place where they shall be innovating and breaking through in medical procedures and the creation of medicines and treatments that shall attract others. And there shall be a creative class of medical professionals, technicians, biologists, and doctors that shall gather. And then I saw a connection like large arms, a connection between cities getting larger. The arms of connection reach west and east. They reach west to Rochester and, and Buffalo and then east to Utica and Albany. And this corridor shall eventually stretch north and south, even towards Watertown and Binghamton. And it shall be a corridor of prosperity. And they're going to call it the New York miracle because what was stagnant for so long shall be filled with blessing and filled with growth. Hallelujah. Because of time, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to share this, this last part. So I've given you glimpses and pieces. Walk in the light that you have and prepare, prepare, prepare to be blessed and to be a blessing. There are assignments that you are about to receive from me, and you must finish everything I've told you to do. For it was a sunny day when I told Noah to build the ark, and many, many sunny days in the desert when Noah prepared it, but there came a rainy day. Even so, there's coming days when there will, where you will have, where you will have here, uh, what you have here will not just be for you, but it will be for others as well. So prepare even the arcs, prepare your home, prepare your minds. Make room in your houses, make room in your budget, make room in your life to be a resource, to help when trouble comes on the earth. For we are a city of refuge, a city of refuge, a city of refuge. <clears throat> sharing these things, uh, I'm sharing pieces, and I'm just going to trust the Holy Spirit to highlight what you need to hear for your life and your home and your family. The last piece I'm just going to share from my heart, and you have to judge this. I could, I could miss it. But I, 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 as I stand here today, I'm telling you this is an experience that I had. It's as real as the experience I told you about Friday night and the vision I described Friday night. The very end of August, I went to Africa to our partner ministry there, King Jesus Faith Ministries. They were celebrating their 30th anniversary and we've been partners with them for 17 years. We've helped them build churches. We built a medical clinic in this very, very impoverished community in Western Kenya. And over that period of time, the changes have been remarkable. I remember our first trip there, there were very few vehicles. Most people walked uh, and a few people had bicycles. And as I was going to the event, it was in a big soccer field, I was amazed at the cars and the trucks that were all over the streets and the new buildings that had been built. And it was like the entire region had changed as I was driving to this celebration. We drove into the soccer field and there were about 6,000 people that were there from all the different churches that had been a part of this one ministry. And I was the guest speaker. And as I drove down the street and saw the changes, I heard a word. It was as real as if somebody was standing behind me and spoke to me. And I heard the word reset, reset, reset. And as I thought about that word, and we drove into the soccer field, the people began to celebrate. And it was overwhelming with joy, but the Holy Spirit, would just this word kept echoing in my spirit. And as we sat down under the tent to prepare for the celebration, the word of the Lord came to me, and I heard him say this. There is coming a reset, for even as Babel was reset, so shall there be resetting that shall occur in many places upon the earth. In cities where there has been great progress and prosperity, there has also been great corruption. And in many of these places, they are growing in arrogance and in pride. But there is coming a reset, a series of events that will cause these places to slow and cause a migration. Now in the Tower of Babel, which is found in the book of Genesis in chapter 11, the Bible says that all of the people were in one place and they had one language and one form of communication. And because they were all of one mind and one voice, they, they said, we're going to build a tower that goes into the heavens and make our name great. And the Lord saw that and said, now that they are unified, nothing they imagine to do can be withheld from them. And the Lord said, this progress is not in the right direction. So the Bible says the Lord came down and, listen, confused their language. He confused their communication so they could not understand each other, and it caused a migration. 
So people began to migrate to other places. And as I saw all of this in an instant, the Lord spoke to my heart and I saw a series, an event and or series of events occurring. Some would be natural type disasters. Others would be technologically advanced. It felt like, like a cyber attack that would come to certain places, regions, and cities that would destroy the communication systems. It would, like, a, like the blackout in Atlanta, only imagine that they can't get the lights back on for months. It would cause a disruption in the communication, the ability of computers to speak to each other. It will cause a disruption in the communication of traffic and it would be uh, so disturbing to the system that people would begin to migrate and leave some of these places. But this is what I sensed, that it wasn't going to create a great loss of life, but it was going to cause a resetting of the table. And then the Lord showed me these places like Bungoma, secondary cities, communities that have just been kind of maintaining for a long time. And suddenly, they become very attractive, and people begin to flock from these larger places to some of these smaller cities, and they suddenly begin to grow. And in these secondary cities are kingdom people, and people who could not find the Lord where they were will discover Christ when they come to these other places, because he has waiting there a body of people who know how to pray. And I sense that Bungoma was going to be one of these places that was going to suddenly arise. And I just can't go into the detail to tell you, but uh, the confirmation that came from Bishop Emmanuel after I shared that word, which I didn't know until I shared it, is, is remarkable. Uh, how that particular little village is now becoming a major city in, in the western Kenya and is a staging place for the East African community, which is a community of six nations. And I also sensed, and this is what I have to say to you, Lord help me to say it, um, it was four o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning here. It was about 10 or 11 in the morning in Bungoma, and what I didn't know was that within a few hours, a massive hurricane was going to move over Houston and park there. And what happened in Houston on Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, after this, I wrote this down, is, a, is, a fulfill, is sort of like what I saw in my spirit, where it knocked out communication systems, electrical systems, uh, and it, it's going to, it's there, thank God they're coming back, very few lives are lost, but it, it crippled the community, and it's actually caused thousands of people who lost their jobs to relocate. And right now, there are smaller cities in Texas that are growing very rapidly because of replants from Houston. Now, I didn't know that when I prophesied this, but that is sort of what's happening. Within a week, a terrible hurricane hit Puerto Rico, and to this day, half the power is still out in Puerto Rico, and thousands of Puerto Ricans, our fellow citizens, have left Puerto Rico and have relocated, and hundreds of them have come to central New York. Now, this all was prior to these things happening. And I'm, uh, what I'm telling you is that's the kind of thing that I saw when I heard this reset. But I sense in my heart that what happened in Houston, what happened in Puerto Rico are part of it, but it's not all of it. And I do, and, and I could be wrong. I, I, I'm not praying it does happen, but I sense this, and I, feel, and I wouldn't even say it publicly except that I feel pressed of the Lord to that there's going to come some cyber attacks that are going to cripple some institutions in large areas and cities, and it's going to cause these institutions to have to rethink where they're located because they are in targeted areas. And some of these secondary cities are going to grow very quickly because it becomes a safety strategy. And I could be wrong, but I sense that upstate New York and central New York is one of those regions. I'm either right or wrong on this. So if I'm wrong, I'll be the first to get up here and say, I miss God. But, and I wouldn't even proclaim it except that I feel like I'm supposed to tell you to get your heart ready and to begin to pray. Don't pray for disasters to happen, but pray that whatever happens, God's purposes will be here and that we'll be in a place to be a place of refuge and help and support for things that may happen in the earth in the season that is to come. 
and that we'll be in a place to be blessed so we can be a blessing. That's the key. Praise the Lord.